This video is going to talk about optical activity with respect to inorganic compounds. The example I want to look at uh, is best described from an octahedral species such as cobalt hexamine N+, where N+, is usually 2+, or 3+, and we'll start that off with our first example. So, octahedral shape obviously has a cobalt in the middle, and at each point on the octahedron, we're going to have nitrogen atoms bearing three hydrogens. For reasons that I'll explain in a minute, I'll just color code these. And this species, where we have six independent nitrogens, and they're all of the same type, um, would not actually exhibit optical activity, and I'll explain that in a little bit. If we consider that we could use another type of ligand and still have six nitrogens around, but this time the nitrogens are linked to one another in pairs. And so we describe this as bidentate because each nitrogen lone pair of electrons can join to the central metal atom. And so they could bridge across uh, metal uh, across a 90 degree angle. So we'll join them up in a fashion such as this and to that one and to this one. And you notice that the way I've drawn it I've always gone across a 90 degree angle it cannot go across a 180 degree angle because the carb the backbone usually a carbon backbone is just not long enough in order to stretch across the uh, trans positions now the reason that i've color coded this is that uh, i want to look at the molecule in a slightly different shape in a different way if we consider the face created by joining these three nitrogens together and put that face so that we're looking straight on it from this angle, we will now have an image somewhat similar to the picture below. And in fact, the image that I've drawn, as it turns out, <coughs> will look somewhat like the left hand picture. Had I chosen to connect the nitrogens uh, in a different way, going the opposite way around the molecule, I could have equally come up with this other structure. And the two are related by the mirror image uh, idea uh, of having a mirror plane down the middle of the picture and reproducing everything in, a, in the opposite sense. How do you tell one image apart from the other? And that is why we, we turn the molecule around and look at it from this slightly different uh, view than we usually do. Having the triangle of nitrogens in front of us connecting individually to the triangle of nitrogens beneath, you notice that there's a rotation that has to take place, a corkscrew motion, as we move from the front triangle to the back triangle. If it goes to the right, then we describe it as being the dextro. And if that corkscrew motion goes to the left, then it's the levo. And these represent the two optical isomers of a typical inorganic species.